Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to use the Pythagorean Theorem to find some missing lengths within right triangles. In this example, we want to find the area of this isosceles triangle. We've got side lengths of 13, 13, and 10. Remember, in order to find the area of the triangle, we take one half times the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. The problem with this one, though, is we don't know the actual height of our triangle. That's what we need to figure out. When we draw in that height, that's something called an altitude of the triangle, and what happens is that altitude is perpendicular to the base of the triangle, and it also cuts that base into two congruent pieces. So if the entire length of the base is 10, then each small piece is half of that. So this piece over here is 5, and this piece over here is 5. What we need to do is we need to find the height of this triangle so that we can figure out the area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw just a portion of this triangle. I don't want to look at the whole thing anymore. I just want to look at the piece that looks like a right triangle. On the bottom, that length is 5. This diagonal piece is 13, which ends up being our hypotenuse, and we're going to try to find this height, okay, this h value. So we're going to use our Pythagorean theorem. Remember the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and the most important side is that hypotenuse across from the right angle. So for us, that's going to be the 13. That's going to be our c value. The other sides don't really matter, A or B. We can just plug them in anywhere we want. So I'm going to go 5 squared plus H squared equals 13 squared. Now if we square these numbers out, 5 squared is 25 plus H squared equals 13 squared is 169. In order to work on getting H all by itself, the first thing I'm going to do is subtract that 25 over to the right-hand side. So now we've got h squared equals 144. The last step is going to be to square root both sides because we need to get h all by itself. So we get h equals 12 because the square root of 144 is 12. So that's the height of our triangle. And now if we want to find the area, we do 1 half times the base times the height. The base of our triangle is the 10. And we just found the height of our triangle to be 12. So now we can just multiply these together. If we look at doing this piece by piece, 10 times 12 is 120. And if we do half of 120, that's 60. I guess we don't have a unit on this, but if this was feet, then it would be 60 feet squared. If it were inches, it would be 60 inches squared. So the area of this triangle is 60 units squared. In this next example, we're still finding the area of an isosceles triangle. We've got side lengths of 26 inches, 26 inches, and 20 inches. In order to find the area, again, we're going to have to find the length of that altitude or height of the triangle that runs down the middle of the picture. Remember that height or altitude splits this base into two congruent pieces. Since the whole length is 20, each small piece would be 10. So what I want to look at doing is I want to look at setting up the Pythagorean Theorem in order to find that height or that altitude of our triangle. In this picture, across from the right angle is the 26 inch length, so that's going to be the hypotenuse. I'm going to use this 10 as my A value, and then we'll use the H as our B value. So if we set up the Pythagorean Theorem, we get 10 squared plus H squared equals 26 squared. Now 10 squared is 100 plus h squared equals 26 squared is 676. As we're solving this, we need to get h all by itself, so I'm going to subtract that 100 over to the right-hand side. So we get h squared equals 576. Last step on this one is going to be to square root each side, so we get h equals 24. Now we're not done, we only found the h value, but now we want to find the area. Remember, area is 1 half times the base times the height. Now this triangle is tipped on its side, so we need to kind of flip it up in our mind to figure out what the base and the height of our triangle are going to be. The height is the 24, 
the 20 is going to be the base. So we've got 1 half times 20 times 24. Now if we take 20 times 24, that's 480. And then if we do half of that, we end up getting 240. Since the sides of our triangle are labeled in inches, we also need to label our answer. This is going to be inches, but anytime we're dealing with an area problem, we have to put a little squared power on that. The last thing I want to talk about are some things called Pythagorean triples. So I'm going to make a list of a few different Pythagorean triples. What a Pythagorean triple is, is it's a set of three whole number, integer number values that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem, the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. These are probably the four most common Pythagorean triples, but along with those, we've also got multiples of these things. So three, four, five is a Pythagorean triple, but if we were to double all of those values and get like six, eight, 10, that's also a Pythagorean triple. If we were to multiply all those numbers by 3 and get 9, 12, 15, that would also be a Pythagorean triple. So one way that we can look at it is like 3 times a number, so 3x, 4 times a number, 4x, and 5 times a number, 5x. And we can do that with all of these different triples because any double of this triple would also be a Pythagorean triple. So over here we can have 5x, 12x, and 13x. Down here we could have 8x, 15x, and 17x. And with this one we could have 7x, 24x, and 25x. And these are helpful if we're looking at finding a missing side. If we've got a triangle that had a side length of 30 and another side length of 50, what I recognize is this looks like it's got the makings of one of these three, four, five triangles, but instead of just three, it's 30. So like we're multiplying by 10. Instead of five, it's 50. So we're multiplying by 10. Without even having to do the Pythagorean theorem, I can look at this and say that missing side has got to be something to do with the four. Since we were multiplying by 10, then this missing side would have to be 40. So it's a little bit of a shortcut on finding side lengths of triangles instead of having to do the Pythagorean theorem. We could have still done the Pythagorean theorem with this one, but it was a little bit quicker because I was able to recognize that 3, 4, 5 pattern with our sides. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.